Hello guys, um, I just wanted to make this video uh, to explain how to set up Ocarina of Time randomizer, uh, mainly for the purposes of multi-world and playing with someone else. Uh, I've tried this process, it's quite, it's, it's not very clear to me, um, maybe it's just me, maybe someone else is having difficulties, but I wanted to make this video just to explain some of the intricacies and issues I ran into when I was trying to set up my own uh, Ocarina of Time multi-world. So to get started, um, you want to find the Ocarina of Time randomizer on the GitHub, should be published by Amazing Amphros. Now here is where two things will differ from uh, depending on the time when you're downloading this. So currently 4.0 is being created. Um, it isn't fully finished yet. Um, but there is a 3.0 release as you can see here. Um, the way to download two different versions is in this little section here. The master should be the 3.0 and the dev version will be somewhere between 3.0 and 4.0. Once 4.0 is released I would assume master will be changed to 4.0. What you want to do is download this. Um, once you've downloaded this, it should look something like something like this without, without that. Once you have this, you can open up the randomizer. You should get a window like this. <clears throat> Here is where you'll set up all of your actual settings for the game. Um, this isn't too different when it comes to multi-world. The only thing you need to worry about is setting player count and player ID. So what this will do, if you set a player count, this will create the world with logic of two people playing it. Um, one of the things I ran into, which was an issue, it didn't really say in the documentation anywhere, but if you leave the seed empty, it will randomize every single time you click generate patched ROM. Um, that was one of the issues I ran into. So if I was to type in here, uh, test ROM. When I generate this ROM now, it will have the same seed, but it will have an extra player ID on the end of it. So I'll generate this ROM and I'll show you an example. Right, the ROM is now generated. If we go into the output section, I'll just sort by date modified to make it a little easier. So we now have OOT, then whatever randomizer uh, settings string, and then we have the seed name, and then world two, I'm assuming means world for two players, and this is the player one. So this is the actual ROM, which is Z64 file. If you create a spoiler log, you'll get a spoiler log here. So as you can see in the spoiler log, it's very different from the usual one. Um, you can see here uh, all of the items that are normally available will have a player one or player two assigned next to them. If you control F, something like Kokiri Sword. Um, there we go. Kokiri Sword, five rupees. Um, there should be, yeah, so bottom of the well, Kakiri Sword Player 2, and, yeah, Castle Town Potion Item, Kakiri Sword Player 1. So there is two different Kakiri Swords generated in the spoiler room. Um, this spoiler should be uh, generated whenever you generate one of the players. What you would want to do, um is either send the seed and the setting string to your friend and have them generate the ROM, or how I'm doing it is I'm generating both of the ROMs and sending them. I wouldn't recommend this because sending ROMs is not very good. Um, in the 4.0 version of the randomizer, uh, there is a way to create a patch file, which is a little bit easier way of them generating the ROM. So as you can see here in the spoiler log for the second uh, player two version, the 
Kikiri sword is in the same place. And the second Kikiri sword should be in the second place, yeah. So this means that it's generated correctly. Now that we've covered setting up the RAM and setting up your multi-world so it runs correctly and you should be able to complete the game, you want to go back to the OO2 randomizer section and if you use control F, multi-world, uh, test runner SRL has a section on a GitHub which is a way to download the the mod essentially which allows you to play crossworld the section here should be the section that you want to look at has all of the setup instructions which um most of them are not particularly applicable um he has created a powershell script which is this here and um, what you want to do is download this and all this will do is download bizhook and patch it correctly for the current version. If you use this PowerShell script, in theory, you will have a, a patched version of BizHook that will work with the latest version of the randomizer. So this means not the 3.0 release, but it means the dev branch or whichever is the latest release currently. Um, this is one of the things that confused me slightly. So here, if you're running OOTR 3.0 release, replace this file. Um, what this essentially means is to, once you have downloaded the PowerShell, if you are using the 3.0 version, as I gave an example here, you will have to patch the version that you download from PowerShell to be able to work with the older version. Uh, this wasn't particularly obvious to me, maybe to someone else it was the same. What you want to do is download this PS1 file. Should be able to save it. Once you've downloaded the bizhookcoop.ps1, you want to place it in a folder where you want the bizhook install to be. This means the entire emulator itself. All you want to do is right click, run with PowerShell. And this will open a window. Essentially, what this window is doing is uh, pinging the server and downloading the latest version of BizHook and um, the LUA script which makes it able to play co-op and patching it and putting it all in the correct place. So just wait for this to download and you should be fine. So as you can see here the download's done. Let's copy in the files in. There's a couple more steps after this. If you open this up, it should look like a normal install of BizHook now. Um, we'll wait for the PowerShell to fully complete. The BizHook prerequisites should allow you to run all of the LUA mod themselves. Um, you might have to run this exe separately. Um, here I got an error. Um, this might be because I already have the prerequisites installed themselves. So if you get this error, maybe try and download them separately. Um, I believe there is a download link to them. Yeah, yeah. There is a download link to them here separately if the PowerShell script doesn't allow you to run them, like this case. Once this is done, this should be complete and your BizHook 2.3 should be patched and ready to go for the 4.0 version of the randomizer, which is on the dev branch currently. Um, in this case, or in this example, we are doing a 3.0 version of the randomizer. So we need to do this small patch. You want to go to this uh, page, click Control S to save, and then you want to navigate to your setup environment. Go into the BizHook Co-op folder, RAM controller. Make sure to set to all files so you can see where the other folders. And you want to overwrite 
this ocarina of time dial UI. So in theory, your bizhook is now fully set up and it should work with the ROMs that we generated with the multi-world earlier. If you do not know how to set up Bizhawk, um, there is a setup here. All I would follow is from the Bizhawk co-op configuration section onwards. Um, if you have any difficulties, then I'll run through the process as well. What you want to do is launch Bizhawk. Should take a second, and Bizhawk is open. First thing we want to do is going to customize, advanced, set it to the LUA, LUA interface. And then we need to restart Bizhawk. Once Bizhawk is restarted, we should be able to open this LUA console. This LUA console is essentially just a way to load the uh, script, which is essentially the mod that allows us to play in co-op. What you want to do is go into the bizhook folder and there should be a bizhook co-op.lua file. Once you open it, you, if there is a pause here or a stop, that means the script isn't running. Um, what you want to do is double click and make sure this window is open. <clears throat> now at this point, you want to find your ROM. So in my case, this bizhook uh, should be running the the player one version. Just in my example, I'm going to be running both player one and player two to show how to set up connecting to each other. So this is player one. So what you want to do is when the room is open, we want to set up our online room, which allows you to connect to your friend. In the case of port forwarding, if you have port forwarded, I'm assuming you can choose any. Um, you can choose any of these rooms. It doesn't matter for the host. All you want to do is enter your name, any password that you want, and then any port that you have port forwarded for, and swap the Ocarina of Time Lua script. You should be able to click Create Room. <coughs> You'll get a Windows Defender, in my case. Just allow access, because this is fine. And the room is initialized. In the case of a real-world experience, your friend will now navigate to the rooms, click refresh, and search for your username, um, in my case, Pimlet. And then he will enter the password, ban the port, and set his Ocarina of Time to Lua. Uh, Ocarina of Time Lua script also, and he should be able to join the room. This is in the case of port forwarding only. Um, if you can't port forward or you don't have access to your router, you can use um, a program called Log Me and Himachi. I'll just launch it. In my example here, I'm going to open another version of Bizarre. You probably won't need to do this. But just to show an as an example of how to set it up. So I get a second biz hook here. We will open the player two version of the run. So let's get that open. So player two at the end. This is player one at the top. And as we can see, we've got the room created. Player two will then do the same the console, open the same script, and then you will refresh and in theory uh, should be a permage here. So if you port forwarded, you would enter your own username, so player2 for instance, enter the password and then set it to thingy and join room. Here, this probably won't work for me. Um, if it doesn't work, um, you will usually get a not responding on Bizhawk. As you can see here, this one's frozen. The player two is frozen completely. Um, same, connection timed out because I haven't port forwarded correctly. 
the way to do this with Hamachi, and this is the part where I got confused and it took me a couple of things, a couple of ways to figure it out. You want to go all the way up to the top, and there is a quote unquote room called Custom IP. And what this is, is a way to enter an actual IP to connect to. So in the case of Logme and Hamachi, um, if I was joining a friend, I would join this IP. So I'd right click, copy IPv4 address, and paste. Here I'm connecting to myself, so I'll use that as an example. And put in the IP and joined. And as you can see here, player 2 is connected. And you've joined the room correctly. So, as an example here, I've opened up both games. I'm controlling them with the same controller, so it's a bit awkward to do. We'll head over to Mido's house and see if we have our script working correctly. In theory, this should work the same. So, you can see Pimledge and Player One's case, I got rupees. So that's working correctly. If you do not see a name here, so as you can see here, player one, which is the top one, gave player two a fairy bow. So when I X out of this box, the player one should get a Ruos layer and the player two should get a bow. So there'll be another dialogue here, which means it's working correctly. If you do not see a name in the green text, that means either you're running the wrong version of the co-op script or, for some reason, the actual connection isn't working correctly. Uh, in that case, I would recommend joining the Zelda Ocarina of Time Randomizer Discord. Um, they basically have a dedicated team of people and community members themselves um, in support channels to be able to fix any issues that you have or help you set up the game. This is just a video I wanted to make because this it's very confusing and it's all very new and frustrating to set up. Thanks for watching and goodbye.